tiny girl is unable to walk, physicians discovered the startling cause in her hair, from the moment of their birth, a mother's first priority is the welfare of her offspring, she takes on the responsibilities of guardian and mentor, supervising their every action and keeping them safe, however, the world is full of invisible dangers that no mother, no matter how watchful, can avoid. Dangers so small they could fit in the palm of your hand, yet which have the capacity to cause us great pain and even death, Jessica Griffin was a modest, industrious mother who shared a quiet neighborhood on Jackson's west side, the state capital of Mississippi, with her only daughter, Kane, since her husband, Fred, lost his life in a devastating motorcycle accident five years ago, Griffin has been parenting her daughter alone, Kane never knew her father died until years later. When she saw a picture of her parents in the living room and asked her mother who the man next to her was, Kane was only a few. Months old when her father died, her mother, fighting back tears when she recalled her husband, said, that's your daddy, honey, his name was Fred, and I know you would have loved him as much as I loved him, you look so much like him, you don't know how much, once more, raising her daughter without Fred's assistance was extremely difficult for Jessica, particularly following his untimely and terrible death, however, she succeeded. Furthermore, she never felt alone in all of this because her parents, and friends were there for her and her young daughter at all times, Jessica made the decision to take a leave of absence from her work as an editor of children's books after she became a widow in order to fully dedicate herself to raising her child and be more present throughout her formative years, she was genuinely passionate about her profession as an editor. And she decided to return to her role as editor-in-chief at a significant national publishing house after taking a nearly four-year leave of absence to raise her children and grieve her spouse in private by then, as her mother had informed her on multiple occasions, Tiny Kane had reached five years old and had developed into a gorgeous, inquisitive, athletic youngster who could not be denied anything. Not only did Kane have her father's dazzling blue eyes and reddish blonde hair that were impossible to forget, but the two had similar interests and pastimes. Since her grandfather took her to her first baseball game when she was two years old, Kane's father has been a huge fan of baseball, one of his greatest wishes was to be able to watch his favorite team's games with his kids every week, just like he did as a child, this is a wonderful tradition that, in spite of Fred's untimely death, Kane's grandfather decided to keep going in honor of his late son. Attending baseball games was difficult for Jessica because it brought back too many happy memories of her husband and their time together, it was actually quite traumatic. For her to return to the stadium without her spouse, when he had proposed to her there, Kane created her own tradition and enjoyed the sport they both loved by going to all the games with her grandfather for the first few years of her existence. But when Kane grew older and became more conscious of what had happened, she made an effort to persuade her mother to accompany them and take part in the sport that her father had loved so much. Kane begged her mother, observing that once again her mother had declined to join them and had instead planned to spend the afternoon watching TV at home, saying, Mommy, you can't stay home all the time, daddy would want you to come and enjoy the game together with me and grandpa, I'm sure, come with us tomorrow, please, I'm sure you'll have a great time, her mother laughed and said, the fries I make are excellent too, honey, hoping to turn the conversation away from her daughter's request. But she was unsuccessful, Kane persisted for the rest of the day. And eventually Jessica agreed to attend to the game the following day after some minor haggling in which the seven-year-old girl pledged not to ask her again for a long time, since her husband's passing, she would be visiting the stadium for the third time and even though she didn't feel prepared, Mrs. Griffin made the decision to attempt moving on with her life as her husband would have wanted her to, heeding the counsel of her friends. It's going to be so much fun, mommy, you won't regret it, Kane exclaimed when her mother eventually consented to accompany him to the game, Jessica didn't regret going to the game with her daughter because, in addition to reminiscing about her happiness with her husband, she also learned how wonderful it could be to relive moments and take part in a lovely tradition that had always bound the family together. Nobody could have predicted the horrible occurrence that would occur the morning after the game and cause Tiny Kane to be admitted to the hospital. Right away, everything took place the morning following the game, while making breakfast in the kitchen, Jessica waited for her daughter to come downstairs so she could help her prepare her school bag, but Monday morning, as soon as Kane Griffin struck the ground, she passed out, the seven-year-old was unaware of what was going on, every time she tried to stand, she stumbled and collapsed, when she realized she couldn't move, 
she hurriedly dialed an ambulance and alerted her startled mother for assistance, I can't get up, I can't feel my legs, I don't know, it's strange, the weeping young child said, scuttling across the floor, mom, help me, Jessica was shocked to see her daughter's state and realized, while helping her to her feet, that her tiny child was babble and had difficulty communicating, she was unable to comprehend anything and hurried to make an urgent hospital appointment by calling the emergency department. And that's exactly when, en route to the hospital in the ambulance, a pea-sized tick from Griffin's side became embedded in the girl's scalp, she feared the worst when she approached to have a closer look and saw that the insect's body was swelled with a girl's blood, Jessica quickly had the medics who were with them remove the tick from the girl's scalp after informing them of her discovery, the physicians had already warned her, yet they still retained the bug in a bag for further examination, most likely, it was tick paralysis, a rare condition, after Kane's admission, the hours passed slowly, and Jessica, along with the rest of the family, had to wait in the hospital hallways for over six hours before learning the precise nature of the girl's injuries, eventually, the wait was over, the findings showed that although Kane had advanced tick paralysis, her life was not in jeopardy, she should exercise patience and trust that the daughter will respond well to treatment, the experts advised. When this kind of paralysis is hard to reverse and recovery would be gradual, Jessica was extremely alarmed and kept questioning the doctors about what had happened to her daughter, how is it possible my daughter was the victim of a tick, doctor, aren't those kinds of bugs only supposed to stick to animals, I had no idea they could also bite humans, and why hasn't it bitten me or her grandpa, it only affects her, Jessica said, dr, Morris spoke slowly to Mrs. Griffin so she could understand what he was saying and not become more anxious, this type of accident is more common than it seems, the problem is that the population's hardly informed about it, every year, we treat between 50 and 100 cases of tick bites, most of them occurring in children of your daughter's age or younger, he said, Jessica was eager to explain her thoughts and asked again, and how do they transmit the disease to the child without realizing it, is my daughter going to stay like this forever, tick paralysis is caused by female ticks that are about to lay eggs, when the tick swells from feeding on blood, it secretes a neurotoxin into the host. Symptoms may appear five to seven days after the tick starts feeding, but sometimes they appear sooner, the victim experiences fatigue, numbness, and an increasing inability to move, later on, the victim finds it difficult to move their tongue or face, if nothing is done, the toxin eventually renders breathing impossible, resulting in severe respiratory failure, don't worry. Your daughter is not one of the victims of tick paralysis, your daughter is not one of them, the doctor explained gently. She reacts well to treatment and has received treatment on schedule and have you seen more cases like my daughter's lately, do you think we should avoid going to places with vegetation or animals outdoors to avoid this, I'll do whatever it takes to make this known so it doesn't happen again, Griffin continued, once more. She was adamant about determining what caused her daughter's accident and wanted to raise awareness of the issue to spare another family from going through a similar tragedy. Although humans are not able to check themselves for ticks, human children are also susceptible due to their smaller body mass, with girls being most affected because they can easily hide among the long hair, the truth is that preventing it is not easy, we can all suffer the attack of a tick without realizing it, you shouldn't obsess about it what happened to your daughter's not her fault, Mrs. Griffin's demands for further information about what had happened to her daughter were starting to irritate the doctor, but he remained composed and was able to explain everything to her in a way that made sense and put her at ease. After speaking with the doctor, Jessica discovered that her daughter was safe even though she would need to stay in the hospital for a few weeks, this made Jessica decide to take action and launch a social media campaign to raise awareness of the risks associated with tick bites, Griffin posted on Facebook, appearing to be both relieved and concerned after tons of blood work and a CT scan of the head, UMMC has ruled that it is tick paralysis, please, for the love of God, check your children for ticks, it's more common in children than adults, Griffin said, Griffin continued to post updates regarding the girl's recuperation and the primary signs that indicated a tick bite, her goal to spread awareness was quickly realized. As evidenced by the numerous likes and comments that swarmed her posts in a few short days, praising her efforts and wishing her a swift recovery, however, 
Things didn't end there since a few parents were able to learn that their kids had been bitten by a tick owing to the viral network Jessica had started with her post and the medical professionals were able to properly treat them in order to get rid of the poison that the bug had injected them with. The girl was holding two balloons in the hospital hallway in the last picture the mother shared on social media, Griffin said with a raised hands emoji, Luku is walking out. The hospital, everything's completely back to normal, God is good, Griffin was thrilled to learn that her small gesture had made a difference and thanked everyone for their support from the start, gradually, a small community of supported information about the danger of these insects was created, managing to correctly inform parents and at the same time save the lives of children who seemed to have no choice. A week after the picture of her recuperation went viral, Kin was allowed to go back home. And hundreds of people celebrated with her and her family on social media, a good conclusion to a horrible incident that, regrettably, affects us all, Jessica worried about other people, something that not many people can do when they're in pain, she just wanted to let everyone know so that no one else was in her position of powerlessness, most of them would have been preoccupied with their boy and had forgotten about the others. I hope we can all be as wise as she was, that concludes the first. Narrative, let's see another one that is comparable, an old man slipped cash into her son's pocket, mom started crying after hearing what he said, this is a touching tale about an elderly guy who, while out shopping at his neighborhood Target supermarket, seems to drop some cash into a small boy's pocket at random, given the number of strange persons with evil purpose that exist, the mother was quite wary, you won't soon forget the elderly man's motivation for handing the small youngster some cash, though, See what transpires next in a little, unassuming department in Detroit, Michigan, by continuing to watch, Owen, who was six years old, lived with his mother, Kathleen, since Owen's father abandoned the family when he was a newborn, life has been difficult, Kathleen put in a lot of effort at her two jobs to make ends meet, but their money was never secure, Owen was a lively, intelligent youngster who had an unshakable passion for dinosaurs, he was blissfully oblivious of these. Hardships, dinosaur-themed TV series and novels dominated his world, and he had a strong desire for the toys that he had seen at the nearby Target when they were getting ready for the day one morning, Kathleen had a conversation with little Owen, Owen, honey, after school today, we need to go shopping for groceries, we have to pick up some food for the week, can we go to Target, mom, I want to see the dinosaurs, Owen begged, Kathleen let out a heavy breath when she felt the burden of their meager, Resources crushing her heart, we can go, but we really need to focus on buying food today, Owen, however, I beg you, mom, I must have the T-Rex and the Velociraptor, are they available, Owen went on, you have no idea how much I adore those toys, but they're really pricey, Kathleen emphasized the importance of purchasing groceries first, saying it was more pressing at the moment, when his impressionable mind battled disappointment, Owen's face fell, though that's what you say every time, whenever I, Ask Santa, I never get a new toy, dinosaurs, please, my darling, I get it, but we just don't have the funds for luxuries at the moment, Kathleen made the astute observation, smiling, that they must exercise restraint in their expenditure, so unfair, Owen yelled aloud, nobody ever gets new toys but me, Kathleen felt anguish when she struggled to provide for their basic necessities while also wanting to grant her son small ambitions, Owen, I apologize, at this moment, we need to go grocery shopping. And I wish things weren't this way, she suggested trying to get the dinosaur toys at a later time. A mix of hopelessness and annoyance showed on Owen's young face as he crossed his arms, Owen, it's time to prepare for school, I'd like to chat more about this later. As they left for school, the weight of their reality hung in the air, a stark reminder of the challenges they faced every day. Kathleen felt guilty for not being able to give Owen the toys he so desperately wanted, and Owen struggled to understand why his beloved dinosaurs remain just out of reach, the conversation ended with an unresolved tension embraced by a deep sorrow that seemed to deepen every day, 75-year-old George lived in a nearby house on a neighboring Detroit street, his two-year-old grandson, Tommy, had recently died after a brief but fierce battle with leukemia, turning his life, which had once been full of laughter and joy brought about by Tommy's presence, into a quiet, solitary existence, he rarely left his house, the outside world now a distant reality, only making occasional trips to Target for the bare necessities. When George answered the phone one very depressing day, it was Faith, his daughter and Tommy's mother, 
he braced himself for the emotional roller coaster that chats with Faith often produced, Hi Dad, how are you holding up? George's voice sounded tired and heavy with sorrow, I know it's hard, Dad, but I'm managing, Faith. Just taking each day as it comes, said George, it is also challenging for me, every morning, with a voice bursting with emotion. I realize that Tommy isn't here, Faith remarked, George groaned under the pressure of her remarks, I know, it's always there, there is a noticeable lack of life in the house because he isn't there, his absence is deeply felt but for Tommy's sake and our own, Dad, we have to keep going, is self-care something you've been addressing, Dad, consuming nutritious food, getting out of the house, concerned, Faith inquired, this is something I'm obligated to do, Faith, George whispered back, I acquire all. Of my food and household essentials from Target, you should probably get out more, Dad, but that's wonderful, you should think about getting yourself a beautiful present, can I get you a few new garments? You look like you haven't changed clothes for quite some time, Faith remarked, George remarked, new clothes, with a dry chuckle, to me, it seems unnecessary, my personal ones are perfectly functional, exceeding necessity, Dad. It's about prioritizing self-care, maybe something, even a little change. Might be better for you, Faith pleaded, George pondered her words, feeling both frightened and unfamiliar by the prospect of change, do it for me, Dad, I beg you, in thoughts of you I find myself captivated, it is my desire that you attend to your own needs, while George thought about her offer, there was a long pause, finally, he said, listen, Faith, I intend to peruse the clothing selection at Target, I am not promising to make a purchase, though, Dad, that is the only thing I need, believe me. When I say you should try it out, Faith encouraged, George saw a slight shift in his demeanor following the presentation, something ignited within him as a result of Faith's encouragement and care, the following day, he headed to Target with a grudging feeling of resolve, naturally, Owen and his mother were shopping at Target on the same day that this occurred, after school, his mother picked him up, and the two of them headed to their neighborhood store amid the vibrant aisles of Target with his. Beloved dinosaur toys all about him, little Owen was engrossed in a world of ancient imagination, when he played with a T-Rex and a Velociraptor, making them roar and stomp around the shelf, his eyes glistened with joy, Kathleen, his mother, looked over the necessities, her thoughts heavy with the strict budget she had to follow, Kathleen, her spirit burdened by the task at hand, approached Owen after a while, let the dinosaurs go, my darling, since the time has come to return them, we must. Complete our purchasing, Owen's face drooped in an instant as his little hands drew the toys closer, but mom, wouldn't it be easier if we just bought one, I am incredibly infatuated with them, you do, honey, but we simply do not have the funds available at this time, we have to go grocery shopping and get some necessities for the house, Kathleen whispered back, when his eyes began to swell, a sense of desperation crept into Owen's voice, my mom never gives me new toys, though, no one I know doesn't. Have some awesome plaything, then why am I not allowed to own these prehistoric beasts? Kathleen drew herself down to Owen's level, her expression both powerful and caring. Owen, I know you want them badly, but we need to be frugal, we should only spend money on necessities. Tears welled up in Owen's eyes when he glanced at the toys in his hands however, it is unfair, dinosaurs are quite adorable. Kathleen wished she could give her son simple wish, who had a heavy heart, yeah, I'd love to be able. To get those for you, which one do you prefer, just ten more minutes of playtime before we have to put them away, Owen's expression was a blend of sadness and resignation, even though he knew he couldn't bring the dinosaurs home with him, he resumed playing with them nevertheless, ten minutes, alright, still, he wished he could bring them home with him, when she observed him. Kathleen felt the immense pain of being unable to fulfill her son's desires, I wanted things to be different, but I knew I had to be strong for them both, when George walked the aisles of Target, thoughts of his grandson Tommy, who had passed away, raced through his head, he rarely went and always felt both familiar and strange, his daughter Faith had suggested that he buy some new clothes to help him feel better, but he didn't seem to be interested in anything, Tommy felt as though there was a hole in every aspect of his life because of his absence, then he spotted him in the toy aisle, a small child, maybe six years old, Happily playing with dinosaur toys, Owen was the name he overheard, he was very much like Tommy, with the way he made the dinosaurs roar and the twinkle in his eyes, so it hurt him to watch him, it reminded him of something he had seen in the past, he heard what Owen and his mother were talking about, 
it was clear that they were unable to purchase the toys, the youngster was clearly disappointed, and he found great solace in his mother's powerlessness, it brought back memories of the several occasions he had witnessed his own daughter battle with difficult choices for Tommy when he stood there, an idea crossed his mind, this was an opportunity to brighten a child's day and see a smile that he had been missing so much, his heart was deciding what to do when he found himself drawing near to them, he was thinking, I want to buy those dinosaurs for Owen, I can't bring Tommy back, but perhaps I can bring a moment of happiness to this young boy, it would be a way to honor Tommy's memory. To spread the joy he always carried with him, George was both nervous and determined when he walked up to Owen, who was glued to the dinosaur exhibit though he hadn't spoken to anyone outside of his immediate family in a long time, the idea of making Owen smile and perhaps catching a glimpse of the happiness Tommy once brought gave him the confidence to approach Owen. George felt a wave of warmth and nostalgia wash over him when Owen approached him, completely engrossed in the dinosaur exhibit. With a forced smile, he asked, Do you like dinosaurs, young man? After taking a big breath, Owen lifted his gaze, and a sparkle appeared in his eyes, I adore them, you know, personally, I love them, kneeling beside him, he felt an ever-increasing bond of companionship, which one's your favorite, cry out, the T-Rex, he exclaimed without thinking twice, because he's the strongest and he roars the loudest, thinking back on all the times he and Tommy had a conversation like this made him laugh, it's the perfect option, Dinosaurs like the Tyrannosaurus rex are amazing, a drawn-out discussion about prehistoric animals ensued between them, Owen had an incredible breadth of information, which George found astounding, he went into detail about the different species, where they lived, and what they ate, for a moment, George forgot about his problems since his enthusiasm was contagious over the course of the discussion. The topic inevitably drifted off, a trace of melancholy crept upon Owen's features. As his countenance transformed, I wish I could take these dinosaurs home, but mom says we can't afford them, said Owen, it was George's remarks that made his chest constrict, he remembered a conversation he had with his mother, he said softly, Owen, your mom is doing her best, moms have to make tough decisions sometimes, that in no way diminishes her affection for you, actually, it's a sign that she's putting in a lot of effort to look after you, when the young man tried to make sense of everything. Owen turned to face him, I know she loves me, but I really wanted these dinosaurs, remarked the man, George nodded, understanding his distress, I know it's hard, Owen, but sometimes the most important things aren't things we can buy, with Owen's help, George thought he would be able to lift his own spirits and escape the misery that had gripped him for a while, feeling content, he discreetly removed twenty dollars from his wallet, he slipped it into Owen's pocket after delicately folding it, a small smile, playing on his lips, allow me. Owen, please, take this, spend it on the prehistoric beast that most captivates you. Owen's expression turned startled, and I just can't handle this, my mother has always taught me not to take anything from strangers. George was eager to lend a hand, even though he could see why he was hesitant. Oh, I understand, Owen, your mother is correct, but consider it a present from a dinosaur enthusiast just like you. I would be really happy if you could have that, when Owen looked at the $20. Note and then back at him, his face betrayed a combination of astonishment and joy, he inquired with an inquisitive tone but why would you give me this, with a smile, George felt a twinge of regret building in his chest, because, Owen, seeing you happy with those dinosaurs would make me happy too, it's a way for me to remember my grandson, Tommy, who also loved dinosaurs very much, after a moment of hesitation. Owen's face brightened with a smile that made George's heart sing, George felt a wave of satisfaction as Owen enthusiastically described what he would buy, okay, I'll take it, thank you so much, I'm going to get the T-Rex and the Velociraptor, however, at that very moment, it seemed like a big stride toward his recovery, Tommy was reminded of their happiness and love when he saw Owen happy, which was the nicest kind of reminiscence. Kathleen turned the corner and saw her son Owen being given money by an unfamiliar, elderly guy, her concern sparked from her mother instincts. Kathleen blurted, hey, back away from my son, when she hurried to get to Owen and George, George, startled by her abrupt approach, put up his hands in a peaceful gesture, ma'am, I didn't mean any harm, Kathleen looked intently, as if to shield herself, when she pulled Owen nearer, she whispered, I don't know you, Owen, come here, Owen, who appeared little taken aback and confused, approached his mother, George here. My grandson passed away from leukemia not long ago, 
George spoke with a trembling voice, describing the boy as being around your son's age and sharing Owen's passion for dinosaurs, excuse me, ma'am, my intention was never to cause alarm to you or your son even though she was guarded, Kathleen's face softened a bit, I'm sorry to hear about your grandson, but you can't just give money to children you don't know, George nodded to show that he understood her concern, it has now occurred to me, and I am sorry, I couldn't help but think of my Tommy whenever I saw Owen playing with those prehistoric creatures, I wished I could do him a favor and fill the void in my life left by the loss of my grandchild with a little happiness. After turning to face George, Kathleen's initial distrust transformed into sympathy, I understand, but we can't accept your money. Tears welled up in George's eyes, I beg you, I am adamant, it would be really incredible for me, I really don't require it. But it would offer me immense joy to know that I could make Owen happy, Kathleen hesitated, caught. Between her ego and George's real kindness, Owen tugged at the sleeve of his mother please, mom, could we just take it, it would bring joy to the man, and I have a deep affection for dinosaurs, after giving it some thought, Kathleen nodded gently, okay, George, I appreciate it, you are being quite generous, we are deeply appreciative, tears were streaming down George's face, yet he managed to smile despite his loss, thank you for accepting it, Owen beamingly said, it means more to me than you can. Imagine, to George thank you, sir, I'll take good care of the T-Rex and Velociraptor, just like you would have for your grandson, with tears in her eyes, Kathleen continued, thank you, George, this is a kindness we won't forget, George felt a sense of bittersweet fulfillment as they said their goodbyes, despite the intense emotional content of the exchange, it served as a reminder that human connection and great kindness can occur even in the most painful circumstances, Owen's eyes had regained, their spark, which had been diminished by their difficult situation, thanks to the toys, Owen once glanced up at Kathleen thoughtfully when she tucked him into bed one evening, Mommy, do you think we'll ever see that man, George, again, Owen, I'm not 100% certain, Kathleen said, I don't know, maybe, if I may inquire, why, to reiterate, I am really grateful to him, he brightened my day, everything is perfect with my prehistoric animals, his kindness was contagious, with a smile on her face, Kathleen, gently brushed his hair, I'm pleased he brought you joy, you will be able to express your gratitude to him when we meet again, perhaps, I sincerely hope that's the case, I will inform him of the many exploits that Velociraptor and T-Rex had experienced, do you believe he would be interested in that, I believe he would be interested in hearing about that, Owen, he gave off the impression that he knew the secret of dinosaurs enchantment, Owen firmly hugged his T-Rex cuddly and smiled with satisfaction, farewell, mommy, and farewell, prehistoric creatures, George, I am grateful for your presence, after turning out the lights, Kathleen quietly left the room, Owen's modest statement of thanks served as a potent reminder of the influence that one small deed of kindness can have, Owen's fantasies of dinosaur adventures as he fell asleep were a tribute to the enduring delight that a stranger's generosity had brought into his life, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe, and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.